Nothing much ever happens in the town of Shoofly, Mississippi. It's as quiet a place as you'd ever hope to find. If you like quiet, that is. People have been living in this town for as long as anybody here can remember. Probably came about when the railroad came through. Yes, sir, people have been living and dying and raising families here in Shoofly for a long time. A good long time. Now you might ask, what does one do between living and dying here in Shoofly? Well, they talk. Yes, sir, they talk about a lot of things like, you know, who's running around with people's husbands, or who took the money out of the collection plate on Sunday, or about the time the swindler came to town and made off with all the widow's money left to her by her dearly departed, things like that. Yes, sir, if anything ever happens in Shoofly, you can be sure people are going to talk about it till, well, they'll talk about it till something better happens. Like the time poor Miss Sharpley met her untimely end to her 85th birthday party. That was something they talked about for, well, as a matter of fact, they're still talking about it. Yes, sir, that was curious, mighty curious. As I said, it was old Miss Sharpley's 85th birthday party, and all her friends and family members and acquaintances had come back to help her celebrate. If I remember correctly, it happened just as they had all commenced to singing. Happy birthday, Miss Sharpley. Happy birthday to you. It was a sorrowful sight. People had come busting out with all, from all over with excitement, a celebrating, and they found themselves mourning the loss of their loved one. It had been a lovely funeral, and when the pastor gave his message, why, there wasn't a dry eye in the whole place. Most folks were right surprised with the turnout because, well, as it turns out, Miss Sharpley wasn't the most popular woman in Chufla. And, well, it seems she had made herself a few enemies over the years, and some folks weren't at all surprised with her untimely passing. In fact, there was a suspicion around the police department that foul play was involved. But it wasn't until after Sheriff Riley showed up that anybody paid the notion any mind. Things had started settling down around the Sharpley home where the service was held until Sheriff Riley made an entrance with his usual tact and subtlety. Hold it right there, everyone. Make exact where you are. What you up to, Poke? Poke? Quit a waving that fire on the ramp. This here's a place of mourning. I'm aware of that. My apologies to the women folk. But you were all hereby under suspicion. Oh, under no. suspicion? Oh, no. Of what? What, what are do you, you mean, talking Pope? about? What I'm talking about is we got a case of murder right here in Shoe Fly. Murder? What's he talking about? There ain't been no murder. What are you talking about, Riley? I'm speaking of the murder of Miss Ida Mae Sharpley, white Caucasian, age 85. We all know what she looked like, Sheriff Riley, but whatever gave her the idea of murder? Miss Sharpley died of natural causes. Is that so? Well, not according to the labologist up at the station. By use of the scientific method, they have deducted that Miss Sharpley was poisoned by person or persons unknown. The deadly unknown substance which was conducive to rapid decline of her person. Which means? She was done in. And I mean to find out who done it. What do you know? It's a genuine who done it. I'm scared. I don't believe I'll go home where it's safe. I'm afraid you'll have to remain here, ma'am, for further questioning. That goes for the rest of you, too. Well, now, now, friends and neighbors, I suggest we all do as the sheriff says. Well, while the sooner he finishes up, while well, the sooner we all can leave. Thank you, Reverend. Now, everyone, please remain calm and stay in the vicinity of this house. I hate to be one sort of use of force, but uh, as long as this here badge stands for justice, this gun will remain without prejudice. Yes, sir. This time Sheriff Riley had a real murder on his hands, a genuine who done it, like the kind they read about in those cheap detective novels. And let me tell you, Sheriff Poke Riley loved every minute of it. As you can see, the sheriff took things very seriously, though no one really took the sheriff very seriously. Why, there hadn't been a murder in shoe fly since the Jenkins' best milk cow was killed. And old man Jenkins done that himself. You see, Mr. Jenkins had been getting along in years, and, well, his eyesight, it was right poorly. If I remember correctly, 
Mr. Jenkins said he had seen an intruder eating his wife's begonias one night. And well, Mr. Jenkins fired a shot just to scare the varmint away. And on his way out, well, Mr. Jenkins says that that intruder killed that milk cow just for spite. No one really said much about it, but just listen politely. Every time Mr. Jenkins talked about the time, his prized milking cow was shot. Murdered, he said. Well, the sheriff had begun his investigation now, bringing up things that shouldn't be brought up and asking about things that should not be asked about. But that was just Sheriff Poke Riley. He did what he wanted to because, well, 